Hey, this is Joel here from the Yellow Phantom, and today we're gonna do a little thing different. Instead of jumping right away into the tutorial, um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of introduction of what we're gonna do in this series, and in the next tutorials, I'm gonna be showing you how to accomplish that. So first of all, the purpose of this series is to create barcodes. Um, most people go to a store, they get a product and they see the barcode that it has they take it to the register to the register and then it gets scanned and you get charged for that product but most people don't realize how what those barcodes mean or how do they work I'm gonna explain to you how they, they work and how to create them in the future videos essentially if you live here in the US or in North America the most used barcode here is the UPC barcode uh, UPC stands for Universal Product Code. Uh, it's the most used here in the US and uh, in North America. Whereas in Europe, uh, the most used one is one called EAN13 or EAN. Uh, those mean, that means International Article Number. And uh, that's a, a similar version uh, to the UPC, but it's in a different format. Uh, essentially, I'm going to be showing how to create the basics UPCA and EAN13. Uh, I guess the, the, the most obvious difference between UPCA and EAN is that the UPCA uses uh, has 12 digits and the EAN13, of course, by 13, you can guess that it has 13 digits. So let's just jump right away into the example here um, so here you see a standard UPC barcode uh, as you can see it has 12 digits um, and you see all the bars there let's get into this uh, it has a section uh, each, each barcode is divided into different subsections or sections for example, here the yellow areas are the default or the standard format for the barcodes for the UPCA barcodes. The the left uh, yellow area is the left guard bar. The middle is the middle guard bars, and the right are the right guard bars. All those are called guard bars because that's the way when the scanner scans it it recognizes in which position it is and so it gets the right format then we have between the yellow lines we have three I mean six areas between those two those three yellow lines so in total we have 12 areas so that's why you get a total of 12 digits now the the first digit is the number system the, that is determined in the barcode then the next five digits from digit one to digit six is a manufacturer's ID. After that, from digit seven to digit 11, we have the item number. And then the last one is the check digit. That digit is calculated in order to assure that the barcode contains the right format. Now, uh, you might be asking, uh, well, what does those uh, black and white line mean or represent well actually they for the scanner they represent zeros and ones uh, the scanner reads binary code in zeros and ones and that's basically what the scanner sees for example in this particular barcode the scanner will see one zero zero one zero one zero one zero 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 one one and etc that's what the scanner will see. Of course, the numbers at the bottom, it's just a human readable representation of the barcode. That's just in case you go to a store and the barcode is not working right or the scanner is not scanning the barcode. Uh, the teller can just type in that number into the machine, into the register, and then charge you for the correct product. And then that's exactly what it means. It just represents binary data. When the scanner reads it, it represents the black line as a one or a high pulse 
and the, the white line or the white space it represents that zero or the low poles. Now let's get into this more deeply. Um, this um, project is going to be hosted here in this URL that you see. Uh, it's going to allow you to contribute to that product. It's going to be completely open source. That's why it's called Open Barcode. And I hope you like you guys like it and enjoy it because you might it has a lot of different uses. For example, let's say you have an e-commerce site, a shopping cart and you want to generate uh, a receipt for a customer that just bought a product from your site. So then you will just use this as a, it's, it looks more professional to have a bark holding, well, uh, I guess it doesn't look professional. Uh, that's not what I meant, but uh, it looks cool to have a bark holding your receipt or something like that. And it's, you're going to be proud of yourself by creating something like that. It's, you just created it. It's not something that you take for granted. It's going to be pretty cool. I'm just going to show you an example of what it's going to do or something similar to what we're going to do. It's as you see here, um, that's a barcode, that's a script working. I'm just going to refresh the page and you see every time I refresh the page you get a new barcode. That's just the script that is generating that barcode. So you get it all dynamically. Uh, nowadays that you, we guys, we have us. We have uh, b smartphones, or the majority of the people have smartphones. Uh, they have the ability to scan barcodes, and there's a variety of barcodes, including QR code, which stands for Quick Response Code. Um, they're pretty useful. They contain a lot of data. By the way, one drawback of these like linear codes, linear bar barcodes, is that most of them they cannot hold that many inf that much information and for example this UPC8 barcode can only contain numbers it cannot contain characters it's just plain numbers so that's one drawback of it but for general purposes it's a good use so uh, I see you next time with the with the next video in showing you how to create a UPC barcode by the way, we're going to create it using PHP, but it can be extended to other languages. Uh, and uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Digital Phantom. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can see the future videos of my channel. See you next time.